Hello guys, welcome to another episode of, well I guess it's not another episode, it's a new series. Um, this is just a mini-series, uh, of me working on the Coaster Bee map, uh, for April slash May, and this will be episode one. Um, uh, just so you know guys, just a, a heads up, uh, Magnum XL200 is coming. Um, I've been working on it. I just had vacation and exams. Um, it is coming, though. Um, and that will be next week. Um, actually, this week now, uh, I guess I should say. Um, so I'm definitely aiming for that. Um, I mean, also, uh, right now I'm also gonna be up pumping out more content for stream stuff, but... Anyway, you don't care about that if you're here for this. Um, I just wanna let you know for any viewers that, you know, do care about Magnum or like, where is it? Um, but yeah, so I will be coming back to it. Um, but yeah, this, this month is very interesting because it's a recreation, the coaster is at least, a recreation of Hagrid's layout, um, except without the Omnimover station and having it slightly spaced out. Um, it's a really interesting system and yeah, I really like it. Um, me and Ed, who I am collabing with this month, um, have decided to go for more of a icy... Uh, type theme uh, with it um, and go for something more uh, uh, interesting, sort of like Expedition Everest at Disney World. Um, I think that's the only Disney that has it. Um, I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, we'll be uh, somewhat recreating that sort of storyline, um, just sort of different, differing ourselves from it. Um, it is not just Expedition Everest. Um, the theme is there's a uh, frozen, what's happened is there's a few monsters, um, that have been frozen in the ice, and now that climate change is happening, um, it's starting to unfreeze these monsters that were long, for, you know, forgotten. Um, and, yeah, so next episode we'll be working on those, um, and, yeah. Um, I do not show this, uh, do not have at the end a real-time section. I do apologize, um, I didn't record one. Um, but next episode, for sure, we'll have a real-time section. I do promise that. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah. So, there's about, like, a few different ways of going about it that we did it. Um, we did, uh, worked on a research station, and also worked on a few other things. Um, and I really like the direction at the moment that it's going. Um, I'm really, really enjoying it. Uh, it's pretty good. Um, if you would like to watch me, um, actually build this, uh, while, uh, like, you know, while, like, live and everything, um, I do live stream on Twitch and do play Parkitect with, like, the Coast Free map, and I play it every so often, um, and actually work on it on stream. And you can see me work on it live there if you want to just, you know, get it done and watch it then. Um, but yeah. Uh... Yeah, the other thing is, I wanted to do, uh, Invisio the Station, um, which is something I don't usually do, but I wanted to do something that doesn't really appeal, or doesn't look appealing, um, without, uh, with guests, but it does look very appealing without guests, um, because what's gonna happen is the guests are just gonna slam into that concrete cubes. I don't really mind a thousand percent, um, at the moment, I might change it, um, because it's, again, the paths are just under those cubes, um, and the guests aren't really gonna walk through it. I mean, you can't have, like, queue gates, as much as I, as I would love that, um, or have, like, a path at it, or path anarchy, um, I don't think that'll ever happen, so you kind of have to sort of imagine it a bit, um, but yeah, I still very much enjoy, uh, the direction that it was going in, um, and yeah, I did take a few looks at how Expedition Everest does it, um, and how all that happens, um, and yeah, uh, the other thing is I wanted to make this a lot more realistic, so you can see that I'm having sort of the numbering system, um, on the floor, uh, Later, I changed this from just having, you know, all these rows combined to having one, uh, gate for each row. Um, which is a lot smarter, honestly. I don't know why I didn't do that in the first place, but here we are. Um, 
But yeah, you can see sort of the whole layout as a whole. It's kind of a very flat layout. I never really realized that. Hagrid's is really flat. I wonder if there's a reason for that. Like, if there's an actual, like, technical reason for that. Like, maybe they can't build over a certain level, but then the spike just breaks that. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if they made it want to make it more hidden or keep it in the valley. I, I don't know. Um, I'd be really intrigued if anyone did know. Um, but yeah. Uh, the other thing was, uh, uh... A uh, good friend, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, a good friend of mine, um, Robo Flamingo, um, actually worked at Disney. And so he was actually able to help me out here, uh, by letting me know, like, how ride operations work. Um, especially for, like, Disney and, uh, Universal. Um, and so that was really helpful because I was able to get sort of, a uh, um, very accurate, uh, representation of how that looks, um, for, uh, you know, for the roller coaster, because I did actually make a full-on operator booth um, that is actually quite accurate, um, hopefully quite accurate, um, to what Disney might do. Um, I don't know 100% what Intamin would do with their control booths, as I don't think that there were any Intamin coasters that uh, Robo worked at. I know he only worked at Vokoma coasters, um, but that's close enough, honestly, so I don't mind too much. Um, there's a few things that you'll notice that won't be there later in the build. Um, because I'm just like, I, I don't like how it goes. Um, like, those lamps are gonna go, um, at some point. Um, but yeah, like, I'm just like, eh, I feel like it's too much. Um, it's making it feel too western. Um, I do want this sort of station to be a lot warmer. And, you know, not, you know, actually, like, warm. You can't, you know, have warmth in the thing. Um, but like, as in like, you know, there's no snow in here, um, because it is, it is frozen, it is, uh, you know, warm, um, there's geothermal events starting to happen, um, volcanic activity is occurring again, because one of the monsters that I will be building in episode two, um, is more of a volcanic, uh, monster, um, that's what I've kind of decided, I want it to turn into a more volcanic monster, um, because I think that's more interesting, um, than just like, you know, that that's sort of another reason why the ice is starting to unfreeze. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll discuss that more. Um, I also just put down some windows of where the right operator booth, just so I can get a good idea of where it's going to be, um, and all that. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I also want to do a pre-show. I've never done a pre-show for a ride, nor done any of this crazy Q stuff. Um, so it's all kind of new stuff for me. Um, I really want to just push, uh, I always want to push what I'm doing and sort of get it going. Um, but yeah, I really like the direction that it's going at the moment. Um, and yeah, I love the little puff of steam it gives off. I love that. Um, it's my absolute favorite. It's just, it's just so good. Um, I don't know, I like it. Um, but yeah, the pre-show is going to be sort of like, you know, um... Uh, just sort of like a, you know, introduction on why you're here, and like, you know, the hope is, is like, I'm trying to gonna imitate, like, we're gonna be exploring, like, different parts of our science, and, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna go to the research station, and then, oh no, the tour goes wrong, you know, all that. So, um, you know, the classic universal thing to do for, like, literally everything. Uh, but yeah, I'm very excited to be building with Ed. Ed is a very, uh, great builder. Um, he's a very, very high detail builder, uh, just like me. Um, so yeah, it, it is, he, he is definitely, uh, a, a very impressive builder, I will say. Um, and I'm glad that he was willing to a collab with me. Um, but yeah. I don't know what else to say. Oh, yeah, uh, this actually, this is something that I... Don't I don't think any Disney coaster has done this, um, but this is what uh, uh, I saw that Bush Gardens and I think Cedar Point. I don't know if Kings Island did it. Uh, Cedar Point, Bush Gardens. I think maybe this is a very big maybe. I think it might just be uh, all coasters that are RMC. Um, 
because they the RMC coasters they have this on Iron Gwazi and Steel Vengeance they have these two TVs uh, are these TVs at the front um, and on the TVs there's like the train and then there's the seats um, and it basically tells you you know which seats need to be closed all the way more like you know it has all the green stuff um, and I still need to make that um, like it has like you know like it tells basically the right attendance, oh, how much is, you know, fully closed, like, perfectly perfectly good. Um, another thing is, like, it also tells you the ride time and how fast you should be. Um, you should be, like, you know, lickety-split. Um, so I wanted to add that. I think that'd be really interesting. I don't think the Entman does that. I could be incorrect. Uh, maybe Velocicoaster has it. Um, but I don't know. I actually don't know. Um, I'd be interested to know. It might just be RMC, though. And I might be completely wrong, and I should not be doing it for this coaster, but I am, because I want to. Um, but yeah, I wrote Iron Gwazi if you were curious. Um, Iron Gwazi was really good. Um, I really enjoyed writing Iron Gwazi. Um, it's definitely higher rated than a Steel Vengeance. Um, I think at some point, of course, um, all the people that do know me, I want to recreate it, because <laughs> I did really like it. Um, but we'll be doing that after Magnum. I'm gonna be pacing myself. I'm not gonna put on two recreations at once. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to do a Magnum recreation. So yeah, and then getting all those, you know, pulls in and all that. Um, but yeah, this design changes a lot. And so now, where I am now, and switching on to forward in time. I've completely redesigned it. Um, so yeah, like, you've got all the new rows, um, so all that work that you just saw, it's just kinda gonna... shook, sh thrown under the rug. Um, and this is actually after a live stream, so if you wanna see it, um, what I work I've done on live stream, um, I think I'll post that at some point on my VOD channel. Um, so if you wanna check that out on my VOD channel, go for it. Um, or if you want to check it out on Twitch, you can as well. The VOD, I think, is still there. Should be there by when this releases tomorrow. Um, well, I guess today now. Um, releases in, like, less than eight hours. But yeah. Um, and now I got, like, all the air gates working and all that. Um, I put in, you know, some barriers for the right attendance. Don't have too much work. Um, I think the new letter or the new numbering system works amazing. Works wonders. Um... And I think it's a lot cleaner than what it was. I think I think the old system was pretty terrible. Um, and I, I am doing ramps because I think that's a lot... Uh, I was trying to be more, like, accessible. Um, but I don't know if that possibly was a bad thing or... Um, let me know what you guys think of the ramps. Um, if you think I should just get rid of it. Um, and just have stairs, possibly. Um, just in that quick look, uh, Ed did make a geothermal... Um, which I thought was amazing. It looked amazing. Um, but we'll take a look at that fully um, in the next uh, next time in uh, episode 2. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited about working on this build. But yeah, right now uh, you go through this sort of abandoned uh, mine shaft at the moment. Um, and it's sort of like an abandoned railway a little bit in there. And then you sort of get into the Hagrid part where it's just sort of flying through nature. Um, which is kind of really all is Hagrid. Like, there's a few animatronics, but beyond that, it's really just flying through some trees. Like, you know, like, it, there's the car, there's the... I'm not gonna spoil. Um, skip, like, 30 seconds ahead if you don't if you don't want to get spoiled by Hagrid's. There's the drop um, that has, like, the vines coming down. There's a centaur in that tunnel. Um, there's the... whatever the beetle thing is uh, in Hagrid's hut. And then I think that's it, like... I don't think there's a ton, like... I really don't. I mean, there's the castle, but... Again, that's all just sort of nature-y. There's no real, like, events. Um, so you gotta really think about, like, what you're gonna do for that. Um... But yeah, like, it is very just nature-y. Um... So I guess it's slightly less work, but also more work. Ed was doing this insane thing where he was putting rivets on the thing. He's a madman, and I even suggested blueprinting it. And he was like, no. I was like, okay. Like, you know. Um, but yeah, he is an absolute madman. Um, he is insane. And I love it. Um, 
And this is one of my favorites. Uh, but yeah. Also got the... Also got the numbers hanging from a, the top, so it gets like that feel. Um, especially because, you know, people that, you know, have all these crowds, you know, staying like they might not know where one or two or three, and having those hanging really helps out a guest and the right attendant's life. Um, but yeah, like, I think that really does help. Getting in more polls here, um, just sort of getting all that stuff for the station. And, yeah, again, nothing too crazy. I know I'm not showing the crazy stuff, uh, this episode. Uh, I'm just sort of trying to get into the feel again. Um, but, yeah. And then I decided to put a Do Not Enter sign on this. Um, which I really liked, actually. Um, I thought that was really a cool. I had to line it up so that it was on both sides. Um, which was a little annoying, but it worked out. Um, then I had to do all these, uh, fencing and all these barriers on here, uh, which again, a little annoying, but, uh, got through it. But yeah, um, me and Ed were doing, uh, some multiplayer during this, um, we were just sort of playing back and forth for multiplayer, um, which I do like doing multiplayer because I feel like, I don't know if it is for other people, I feel like I have a lot more motivation while doing this, um, while playing with another person right there. Um, especially because I can, like, sort of see what they're doing, and then sort of push myself to do more. Um, I get, like, more inspiration, I feel, when I'm building with other people. Um, I don't know if that's the same, but... Yeah, it, it, it is really fun, um, to uh, build with other people, for sure. Um, I really love the multiplayer system. I don't know if I could live without it still, um, without the multiplayer system, Parkitect, and I'm glad that we got that. Um, it's another thing we hold over those darn open RCT players, RCT2 players. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, continuing all the fencing. Again, nothing too crazy. Um, and... Station attend- no, not station attendants, right operators. Um, are you able to get through the fencing? Um, because they do have gates like that, uh, sort of just that you pull open. Um, and that's for sort of the right operators to get through. Um, also did some new ramps, so they're much thinner. Um, and it takes up way less space. Um, and it looks a lot nicer in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I really like it. Um, alright, and then the next thing I wanted to do is do this sort of white, or the blue barrier along there to sort of prevent, you know, sort of like a barrier to... I mean, it doesn't do much. People can for sure climb over, but the blue barrier that sort of says, stand behind this, you don't get hurt from the gates, you know, um, sort of deal. Um, and then putting down all these cubes to get that uh, yellow caution side um, that they have on stations. But I guess you com more commonly found them, find them on um, sort of train stations. Um, and I, I realized my mistake afterward, I probably should have used poles, um, but... Uh, yeah, I use cubes, so... Such is life. Um, then decided to put down a watch your step, because there is a little lip on the trains that you could actually trip over. Um, which would be a liability, so I have to put, like, watch your step, you know? So they don't get pissed off and everything. I don't get sued. Um, but yeah, I'm playing a lot more creative, or realistically as well, this uh, one. Um, but I'm really enjoying able to, like, you know, do this more fantasy slash realistic feel. Um, I don't know. I really like it. Uh, it's really fun. And with that, thank you guys for watching. Um, episode 2 should release about, in about two days' time. Uh, so today I've got a lot of work done. I got that footage ready to go. Um, so that should release about two days' time from now. Um, so keep an eye out for it. And if you want to check out, um, watching me on live streams, uh, check out my Twitch down in the description. And with that, thank you guys for watching. Have a good rest of your day.